Hey, hey, hey! Welcome, guys, to the Muse of Maverick channel. I'm your host, Maverick, and today we are going to be starting Season 2 of The Rising of the Shield Hero. So, um, if you guys uh, are, you know, are newcomers here, first time here, I have watched Season 1 and reacted to the entire season before. Go check that out. I'll probably link it up there or down here or something of that sort. Uh, and, you know, just a quick intro to my, my video style. I'll typically have an introduction at the beginning. My blind reaction will be in the middle. And then finally, to follow up, I will have what I call my musing section which is where I talk a little bit more about you know the episode at hand some of the concepts that it has especially with this being more of a fantasy oriented setting I do like to go into some of the mechanics right uh, of course this is all coming from a blind perspective I don't read I haven't read the light novels of, of Shield Hero nor have I, I I think it has a manga adaption right I haven't read those so it, it's it's you know, some theory crafting, right? Some some guesswork. Uh, but that's part of the fun of, of all of this and to see if uh, my predictions come true or not. But anyways, they'll all be timestamp below so you can just switch to whichever part that you wish. So anyways, uh, Shield Hero, right? It's been a while. The, the thing I remember from, um, from the ending is that I believe now Fumi went to Raftalia's village, right? Uh, and that's how the series ended. Um, at least, I mean, sorry, for, for season one anyways, uh, like he's, he's pretty much got his revenge at this point, right? Uh, the, um, with the queen coming back and, and all that, uh, so the queen is, at least the queen is firmly on, on Naofumi's side, so, um, you know, his name is pretty much cleared. Now, obviously, we still have a lot of other stuff to, to, to go through, like, um, mine is still out there. Uh, we still have the other heroes, the, um, the good-for-nothing heroes, like the, the bow, the, the spear, and, and whatnot. And then, of course, even for Naofumi himself, I do believe some conflict in the last, uh, in the last season where it seems that his powers also has the, uh, possibility of corrupting him, right? Um, which probably ties in a little bit with the overall lore of, of, you know, the, the, the four heroes and specifically the shield hero. But, um... You know, I'm I'm expecting uh, for us to explore that as time goes on. Perhaps not immediately in this season, but at least continuing on as well. You know, there are some conflicts with the churches and and so on and so forth. But hey, anyways, we still got lots and lots of stuff to do. So you know, at this point, all we can do is get into the season and see where exactly this season is going to take us. So without further ado, let's get into the episode. Alrighty, let's begin in three, two. One play. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, and there was that entire like sea battle thing, right? Oh, yeah, the waves. <laughs> I almost completely forgot about the waves. Right, they need to fight back against the waves, right? What the heck? Type of martial arts. I think I kind of remember these characters, right? I, rem I kind of remember some of the characters, but I'm drawing blanks on, on a few of them as well, to be honest. Oh, we're already getting into jumping right into the next wave? Okay, that'd be interesting. Oh, 
Oh, is that yellow? Yeah. And there's Rathalia. Shield unlocked. Bat type. So a familiar would mean that there's somebody controlling them, right? So they're level 70 something. I wonder what the level cap for this world is. Now, if we're going by some RPG logics and whatnot. Like 225? Yeah, 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 season 2. There's actually already a season 3 announced as well. Spirit Tortoise? Okay, and it can actually interrupt the waves? But isn't the wave something that, you know, if I remember correctly, from another dimension, they're sort of like trying to take over this world, right? I mean, and typically with these kind of stories, it's like their original world is dying or something of that sort. <laughs> well, of course, there's all still got to be assholes about it. <laughs> So I guess her character arc would be trying, eventually proving him wrong, or something?
the blood of his son and that which he has done and that which he has done taking the record to our new city mother and to the church of God I mean, if the weights have stopped, then what exactly are they supposed to do in the meantime? Yeah, I mean, well, the other three have played this game before, right? But I mean, with typical RPG logic, if some other event comes up, you're supposed to fight it so you can get experience, right? <laughs> Isn't that the quickest way to level up? I mean, yeah, there's all the morality issues and all that, but I mean, just even from like a realist perspective, I guess there is some sort of catch at the end, right? Partner or something? Isn't this where you know, the slaves and whatnot? Big party member? Oh. Okay. <laughs> I've kind of forgot her, her story. Like, why does she want to become strong again? I mean, I know originally, like, obviously I get that she's trying to prove herself in, in some way, but... 
Like, why was she so intent on joining the bow hero again? All right, welcome to the protagonist crew. <laughs> Level 68. I can't help but feel like this is a sort of backwards way of doing this, but I mean, it's her decision, right? I think having a voice at home is kind of cute. Right, right. I'll take a quicker look at the you know stats and stuff after we end this. I typically go over the video once again after the first time through. <laughs> Alright. Oh yeah, I almost forgot about this the <laughs> this sort of like psych job that he has. A traveling salesman, eh? Is that like an antenna? <laughs> huh, I wasn't expecting to see her again. That scale there was kind of funny. <laughs> if you guys go back a scene and look at that town and and whatnot, the scale was completely off.
Is that like a turtle and a bat combined? Spirit turf is familiar. Alright. I feel like Yusha still needs to, you know, actually fight in order to prove herself, though. Oh, it's a taunt! <laughs> Okay, that's the corruption part. <laughs> so I guess since this is the first episode, we gotta show him, like, yeah! With a power up and whatnot. Unleash the power! You alright, dude? All right, this seems to be an important character, and end. <laughs> All right, since this is the first time we're looking through this, I will go through the ending here. Or actually, is this the opening? Yeah, probably the opening, actually. Alright, and there's a Reaper dude. Okay, since this is the Far East and whatnot, I guess the, uh, the architecture or the country itself is more Eastern inspired. Looking at the, uh, looking at the buildings there. Alright. 
I guess we'll have more time enough for the next time, next episode. Anyways, that's it for this first one. I will see you guys after this. All right, guys. So that was the first episode of season two, and uh, more or less a a safe episode, I guess you could say, reintrodu reintroducing us to the world of Shield Hero, right? Allowing us to see all the characters, see their interactions and whatnot, see their personality shine through, and of course some battles as well to to reacquaint us with their abilities, and particularly with Naofumi. You know, we we have this opportunity to see his. Um, what's it called again? The curse series of the shield shield skills or, or whatever it's called. I did the one that that uh, uh, Corrupts him uh, to a certain extent, right? We see him using that as well and basically touching base on on most of the stuff that is here I mean three heroes are you know as assholes as, as ever um, What's the word that now from used to describe that? I think he called them like the free was it the Free Stooges or something of that sort? But basically, I mean, it's a pretty apt nickname. I mean, they're still as unlikable as ever. Um, and then, you know, we get to see the Queen. We got to see all everything else. And we got to see uh, what the um, what the focal point of at least the first few episodes of the season is going to be, right? The Spirit Tortoise. Um, and then, you know, with a very heavily Eastern-inspired in sort of country here, you know, I'm not quite sure if they're going with the Japanese route or the Chinese route. I would venture, I guess, and say Japanese, especially since, you know, the, the concept of a Lakey, uh, you know, a Spirit Tortoise is more... Uh, I mean, it's utilized in, in both cultures, but I think um, Japan utilizes it a bit more uh, to a certain extent. So, you no, know, we, we will see, right? But uh, at least we will, you know, this is predominantly a more Western influence, Western style kind of fantasy, right? Even, you know, disregarding how the characters look and all that and, and the fact that it's anime, it's still mostly based on the, the sort of Western, um, you know, D and D sort of fantasy kind of style of stuff, but um, now we are going to be having this opportunity to have the more Eastern styles of of fighting and um and skills and abilities here as well, right? So that will be fun. Um, what else here? I guess for this episode, one major it focused a lot on on Alicia, and I mean I I fully apologize, but I really did kind of blank out on on what exactly she did before you know her entire backstory. I, I seem to recall that she was the one who um uh she was the one who was kicked out from the 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 Bow Heroes party at the end of season one, right? Um, because. I kind of forgot why, uh, uh, but anyways, now Fumi took her in because he felt that she had a situation similar to to him, and and that was that, right? And and so I'm guessing that this also, in, in a, to a certain extent, this is also her revenge arc, if you will, um, you know, proving them all wrong, proving the doubters wrong, and proving that she's able to stand on her own and um, and eventually become, you know, perhaps even stronger than the bow hero, har har har, uh, something of the, of that sort. <laughs> of course the way that she went about it while still you know i don't know how, like how does this actually i i just feel a bit weirded out by by all this uh, you know you 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 clearly have some feelings i'm not sure if it's infatuation or whatnot with the bow hero right but then you willingly become the slave of another hero like how how exactly does this work again but i mean sure whatever whatever uh, i'm sure that it's probably not never going to go anywhere right um uh, Reiki's um, uh, sorry, sorry, not Reiki. Or Lisha's infatuation with the bow here will probably end at some point or another. Uh huh. At least that's how I feel. These things are going to go, or at least it it will be turned into like a complete one eighty or something, right? And then maybe. You know, once she grows stronger and whatnot, and then it's going to be the bow hero who's like uh, kicking himself for for letting her go and and something of that sort. And you, you could totally see this kind of coming here, especially considering the the sort of revenge topic that that we're focusing on and concentrating on here. But you know, that remains to be seen. At least you know, at this moment, you know, clearly she's not doing too much yet. Uh, but um, I I can't quite remember like what exactly she did actually. Was it? Was she the one who, who, she was the one who created like, like some sort of diversion, right? During the, uh, 
during the 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 closing battles back in season one, right? During the last during the last wave fight or not? I seem to recall she she played an important role there, and and that was the the um, the source of conflict for for Hoftas and what eventually led her to be kicked out of uh, of the Bow Heroes party. But I can't quite remember like what exactly it was. But in any case, um, now we we can clearly see that that's going to be an ongoing story here, right? And probably. You know, if I were to guess, the entirety of season two would focus a little bit. Mm, it depends on if they want to slow burn it or not, right? If they want to slow burn it, maybe we'll only see her truly grow into her character in season three. Right now, we're just having some inklings of of her insecurities and whatnot. But um, you know, if if nothing else, I would expect her to continue to to grow in in both of her strength, her character, and her emotional side as well throughout this entire season until by the end of it maybe we can see a new and improved Alicia or something of that sort so we'll we'll see about that and then finally at the very end here you know we have this mysterious new character coming out uh, who's eastern inspired eastern beauty right now obviously she's important because she she appears on the key visuals but you know beyond that not really sure like what else to to talk about at this point you know if not going into spoilers or anything not that i've watched or read any of the spoilers so you know there's not really too much for me to go on at this point except that okay uh since she does she seemingly comes from from the spirit torture's country right so i would venture i guess and see say the weaponry the skills the magic that she possesses is more eastern inspired and i guess we will see in the next few episodes here uh beyond that you know what else I mean, I guess it is kind of peculiar that the the, the appearance of the Spirit Tortoise is, is able to interrupt the countdown of the waves. Like, how exactly does that work, right? Um, I'm not entirely sure on the mechanics of the waves yet, but judging from you know all the information that we've had in the in the ending episodes, in the closing episodes of the first season, I would venture a guess and say that um, you know this is the waves are a sort of system to allow the other world to sort of um, invade this world and um, typically when we have these kinds of stories especially since in in the last few episodes of season one we saw the the i guess opposing side kind of heroes as well right they, they've been humanized so typically in these kinds of situations it's always a, a story where maybe the other world is kind of dying and so they have no choice but to to fight these uh, fight these battles you know fight these um you know, use these waves to to invade this current world in order to secure the security of their world or or did or did they actually already mention all of that like i kind of get like everything mixed up at this point there's too many kinds of of anime too many light novels and too many different works that use a, a similar kind of concept so i'm not quite sure if this is just a uh, guess from my side based on you know uh, extrapolating information from how it seems from various other series with the same premise or is it because that in you know they, they actually specifically mentioned it uh uh we'll, we'll we'll see about that but um yeah so so because of that i do find it quite peculiar that that having the spirit turtles is is seemingly able to interrupt the waves because that would mean that it's also doing something to the other dimension the other world as well so how exactly is that going to work well i guess that is a mystery that we will solve by the end of this season so anyways, that is it for this first episode. Um, not too much to go on for this point, so yeah, I guess we'll just leave it at that, and I will see you guys in the next episode. Bye-bye.